For all we know, Iran is funding the anti-Israel protests that are going on right now outside this building. Not that many, but they're there and throughout the city. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. Some of these protesters, it's amazing, absolutely amazing, some of these protesters hold up signs proclaiming gays for Gaza. They might as well hold up signs saying chickens for KFC. Like December 7th, 1941, and September 11th, 2001, October 7th is a day that will forever live in infamy. It was the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah. It began as a perfect day, not a cloud in the sky. Thousands of young Israelis were celebrating at an outdoor music festival. And suddenly, at 6.29 a.m., as children were still sleeping soundly in their beds in the towns in Kibbutzim next to Gaza, suddenly heaven turned into hell. 3,000 Hamas terrorists stormed into Israel. They butchered 1,200 people from 41 countries, including 39 Americans. Proportionately, compared to our population size, that's like 20 9-11s in one day. Israel will fight until we destroy Hamas's military capabilities, end its rule in Gaza, and bring all our hostages home. That's what total victory means, and we will settle for nothing less. The day, the day after we defeat Hamas, a new Gaza can emerge. My vision for that day is of a demilitarized and de-radicalized Gaza. Israel does not seek to resettle Gaza, but for the foreseeable future, we must retain overriding security control there to prevent the resurgence of terror, to ensure that Gaza never again poses a threat to Israel. In World War II, as Britain fought on the front lines of civilization, Winston Churchill appealed to Americans with these famous words, give us the tools and we'll finish the job. Today, as Israel fights on the front line of civilization, I too appeal to America, give us the tools faster and we'll finish the job faster. I also want to thank President Trump for all the things he did for Israel from recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, to confronting Iran's aggression, to recognizing Jerusalem as our capital, and moving the American embassy there. <laughs>